So another area that we um, see a significant number of patients with is those with um, athletic injuries such as uh, dislocations um, from recreational sports or um, collegiate or even professional sports um, and, and or rotator cuff tears. Uh, and these are soft tissue injuries that we, very now can success we can very successfully treat now with arthroscopy. And arthroscopy means we make small incisions, you know, usually only about uh, you know, less than an inch, um, incision um, and we put a camera in the joint so we can see exactly what the problem is and then we make some small other incisions put our instruments in to fix it and so the age range of people who have these problems really ranges from um, adolescents um, all the way to senior citizens and, uh, and there's a wide variety of conditions we can treat so we have um, the shoulder joint here, the uh, um, shoulder blade, um, the clavicle um, the acromion bone, which is part of the shoulder blade, um, and then the uh, shaft of the arm bone, the humerus, and then the ball joint. And if you look, the rotator cuff actually lives in somewhat of an inhospitable environment, if you will, meaning that there's bone above, there's bone below, the, the head bone, and then the rotator cuff, you see these, these are two tendons that typically get torn. And you can imagine that when the arm moves, when the arm moves up and down, you can see how the rotator cuff sort of has a potential to get pinched between these two bones. Uh, and normally there's a lot of space there, and normally it's not a problem. But sometimes you can develop bone spurs that form in here, narrowing the space, or the tendon can get thickened from an injury. And so when you rotate, and you can see how that sort of pinches and can further a tear. And so what we can do is we can insert a camera, and we insert a camera through a small incision in the back. So we're looking, our camera sits right here, so we're looking right at the tendon, we make another small incision in the front here, put our working instruments, and if, if this tendon is torn, so a lot of times this is a tendon here, it's intact, it can be torn and be sitting back here. And we can pull it back over, and we can attach it back down to the bone, right through here. Um, it's a very, very powerful technique, because it allows us to do, um, uh, which, is a, which is a fairly significant intervention through fairly small incisions, which means it uh, allows us to do it as an outpatient. Uh, people go home the same day, so we can fix the rotator cuff. We can also fix, and it's a little harder to see in this model, but inside the joint where the, the cartilage called the labrum, and the labrum can get torn in a dislocation, and we can put the camera all the way down into the joint itself, and we can fix the labrum. Um, so again, that's an all outpatient procedure and allows us to do it through a minimally invasive approach. People can typically expect that these uh, injuries, from a surgical standpoint, uh, heal in about six weeks, um, but you know, to go back to full throwing activities, it, it, it's variable depending on the level of participation and, and um, what ex exactly the demands are. Rotator cuff tears, um, we can certainly see it in younger individuals if they have a significant injury, um, or you can get a partial tear in a throwing athlete, um, but I would say the majority of people that we see who have a, a full tear of the rotator cuff um, that need, requires repair uh, and these are individuals who are probably in um, the 50s and 60s range, and these are typically degenerative tears, but can be very painful, very debilitating. Typically the symptoms of this in, uh, would be uh, significant night pain, for example, and people have a hard time sleeping. They have limited ability to reach overhead, limited ability to do any kind of pushing, pulling, or lifting. And by repairing the tendon, um, we eliminate those symptoms and uh, take away their pain and allow them to get back to their normal functional activity.